think that uh, there will be a lot of uh, knowledge exchange. So I will try to share what little inputs I have gained with all of you. And uh, I will uh, give some uh, scope for you all also to you know, share your thoughts uh, and uh, reward. I would like to have an interactive session. So there would be occasions when I would be putting questions and uh, or I would ask for opinions and I would expect uh, or look forward to your responses in the chat box. Uh, sometimes you can also <clears throat> unmute and speak. So I'll briefly first explain what this session is all about. This session is on teaching pedagogy. What uh, exactly is uh, we will follow a win method, you know, W-I-N. So first thing is, what is this session all about? This session, by the end of this session, all the learners or all the participants here, you will be able to describe, you know, various terms and concepts of teaching pedagogy and its significance. What is the purpose of this pedagogy? What is the use? You will be able to discuss on uh, learning styles of students and your own learning style. And also, you would like to be able to form different teaching strategies based on your knowledge of the learning styles. Uh, this session will also help you to practice you know, some approaches of the teaching pedagogy. When I say practice, I am uh, only trying to establish the fact that you know it takes a lot of practice to become perfect. I am still learning and I am sure after this session, you would be able to practice some of the approaches and you know become experts in this in your own uh, time. You would also be able to elaborate on teaching learning methodologies, the logic behind these and what is the purpose of such sessions. Can we move to the next slide, ma'am? So, uh, as I said, I like to have a very interactive session. So, this is a beautiful slide here. What is pedagogy? And I have got three pictures there. So, I want all the respondents to, you know, look at the picture and tell me what does it strike them or what is the meaning of these pictures according to you. Please go ahead and put it in the chat box. I repeat, all of you need to just, you know, share your thoughts on what exactly these pictures are representing here. There are three pictures you can see. So feel free to put down in the chat box. What is your idea of the three pictures? I'm waiting for some responses, please. Inquisitive, complex, and signs. A baby with a happy, surprising face. Anyone else? Thank you, Radhika, and thank you, Deepti. Uh, any other responses, please? I would like uh, all of you to, you know, share some thoughts so that. Uh, this session becomes very interactive. But I would also like you all to be quick about it because, you know, it's a one hour session. Yes, Shivli, transformation from simple to complex. Very nice. I like the way you think. Okay. I think uh, Usha Rani, curious, creative invention. Excellent. Uh, I think we'll move on. Here, the three pictures are actually symbolic of pedagogy. Pedagogy actually defines teaching a child. So that is what is peda. You know, you have a pediatric uh, uh, field. So peda is related to children. And 
the second picture is a beautiful painting which is symbolic of art and the third picture you can see is mentioned science so what is pedagogy pedagogy actually translates into the art and science of teaching children uh, it is a generic term which has been adopted for uh, you know teaching adults also however the specific term for teaching adults is known as andragogy now over here if you see there is a very beautiful statement mentioned below the tutoring standards company have an interesting definition of the term pedagogy they determine it as the phrase a tutor must elicit response that demonstrates understanding that means your teaching is not complete until and unless the learner gives a response which demonstrates that he has understood he or she has understood the subject so this is something which i need all of you all to you know put it into your back of your heads that when you take a class always try to evaluate the session by the understanding of the student ensure that the student is able to respond and that to the way you expect or the right way then your teaching process is complete you must always try to get the response uh next slide ma'am yeah so as i mentioned the pedagogy translates into the art and science of teaching children why it is an art because you have to correctly put the theories into practice and build up on your teaching experience when i say build up a teaching experience is not sharing what you read in a book it is also adding on value by sharing your own knowledge your own experience and your own thoughts so you have to put these theories with suitable examples or suitable you know creative thoughts and build up the teaching experience and why it's a science the correct knowledge of the theory of learning and the instructional strategy strategies that you need to adopt you need to understand there's a lot of science behind teaching so that is why it's art and science what is a pedagogy for teaching the term pedagogy refers to the strategy the kind of uh, you know methods that educators use it's a kind of practice that you have adopted how you uh, uh, you know conduct the session what is the teaching methodology whether it's a discussion whether it is a you know case study whether it is a project whether it is group activity all these are different kinds of pedagogy it is a uh, teaching pedagogy is also shaped by your own thoughts and beliefs what exactly you feel how you are comfortable but remember one thing you should always focus on how the learner gets comfortable to learn and uh, you, your uh, idea should not remain just that this is the way i teach so i will go ahead like this you should try to adopt your sessions in the way the students or the learners want to learn okay uh, next slide ma'am a beautiful uh, point here you see how the word teach reflects as learn i uh, like this picture very much so i have just shown it here not very relevant to teaching pedagogy but yes teaching and learning go hand in hand if you are a good learner you will definitely be a good teacher or the other way around uh, there is a question there again for all of you please uh, i want some responses this time if you remember any teacher from your past whether it is your school whether it is your uh, college or university doesn't matter who has inspired you you know uh, you must have come across a lot of teachers some classes you would have enjoyed some classes you would have felt okay this is so so some classes you would have slept off so uh, if there was a teacher whom whose class you know you were always waiting to attend 
whatever happened, even if you are not well, you would feel that oh, today in this class is there, I cannot be sick. I have to attend. If you had such a teacher, please uh, mention his or her name in the chat box and also mention what is it that inspired you about that teacher, please. Anyone? I'm waiting for some responses, please. Pujari, sir, from MES College. Yes. Prajna, can you also mention what inspired? What was it that inspired you? Dr. Bosle, ma'am, from Rajaram. What is it that inspired you? His teaching methodology. What exactly he used to do? She used to teach in story form. Excellent. Teaching qualities. Clarity of teaching. Wonderful. She used to recite the things in the form of a story. I, uh, I, how many of you actually use this storytelling in your classroom? You know, we learn more from stories than uh, what actually subjects. So you should use analogies. You should use uh, similarities, slideshows. These slides were very exciting, Sukumar. Good. Anstha, ma'am, encouraged you to do assignments in different ways. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, can we move on to the next slide? Yeah. So here you see, uh, I have given uh, two thoughts here. What is the ability of a teacher? How do you rate a teacher? An average teacher will tell you, will read from the book or will tell you about the subject. A good one will explain, will explain with some you know, stories or some you know, anecdotes or whatever, which makes the class you know, feel comfortable. A superior teacher will demonstrate. He will actually enact the story for you or enact the thing for you. But the best teacher is the one who inspires. It is that teacher whom you look at in the classroom and you say that one day I will be like this person. That is what your aim or your goal should be. So again, in the same lines, let us understand a teacher is never the giver of truth. He is a guide, a pointer to the truth that each student must find for himself. Why do I say this? Because each learner comes to the classroom with a different requirement. For some, the education is needed for a job. For some, it is knowledge. For some, it is a degree. For some, it is because their parents or somebody has sent them and there is a peer pressure on them. For some, it is a pathway to other objectives. For some, you know, I have had students who say that uh, I have come for this degree because, uh, you know, it increases my, uh, what to say, market value for uh, marriage. So you will come across different objectives. So each person will look at the outcomes the way he or she is looking at life. So you cannot generalize the fact for everybody. You can only point in the right direction. They will travel and they will understand and they will deal with the outcome the way they best want to. So the same answer may have two different solutions depending on the students. It's like a tunnel. The teacher can be like a light at the point of a tunnel and point the way towards the end. But the student has to walk for himself and he'll find his own path. Uh, can we move on to the next slide, ma'am? Yeah. 
what is the need for pedagogy obviously uh, there is a need otherwise why we should be studying this so that is the second part or the third part of the win which i started with what interest and need interest i have already given you what i have already told in the first slide the objectives of this session interest why it is interesting why you need to do this and now the need improved quality of learning you we are teachers and uh, what motivates us better than when our students perform so if the students are able to learn more we are happier the classroom if the classroom is more engaged the students are more active and they are ready to discuss and they are participative the knowledge is imparted more effectively across a wider spectrum of learners you know many of the students coming from different backgrounds and mindsets and if we are able to develop higher cognitive skills in the students then for all this yes we are approaching the process in a very scientific manner that is why we are approaching with pedagogy next slide yeah again a uh, repetition of the earlier one see what will happen the classrooms will be more participative students will be interested in the class they will come prepared to the sessions they will talk they will discuss if this happens automatically it leads to better learning outcomes the students and uh, overall the class improves there is much more engagement of the learner and the classroom now i have mentioned another point that is knowledge creation creation of new knowledge happens when you know there are people thinking out of the box new thoughts come in new ideas come in and you create some new information so when that happens again it leads to satisfaction so just give me a second yeah so next slide ma'am yeah a thoughtfully developed pedagogy improves the quality of learning it makes the session more interesting it makes the student more participative and receptive as a result you know this improves the student's level of participation as i said they become part of the thing there is more interaction and the teaching learning process becomes more interesting as a whole an appropriate pedagogy helps impart education to students with different learning styles and abilities yes students have a lot of different individualistic learning styles so the right pedagogy can help to attract a mix of students they develop better understanding of the subject and this ensures achievement of the learning outcomes for any program that is what ultimately we are looking at you know achieving the outcomes so that works out next slide ma'am a correct approach is required for students with special needs there are students you know who are uh, having their uh, physical or mental strengths weaknesses challenges and coming from different groups you know backward segment in the society so on so a well developed pedagogy can make students develop higher level cognitive skills they are able to analyze synthesize and evaluate on the other hand you know if uh, the pedagogy is not very strong then they would be left with knowledge comprehension and application which are the lower order skills in bloom's taxonomy uh, again let us uh, i normally you know i segregate bloom's taxonomy into three levels lower order middle order and higher order so knowledge and understanding that is remembering and understanding are the lower order skills so we need to get out of this we need to move out and take them into the middle and higher order so middle order is the ability of the student to apply knowledge and analyze the knowledge so when you teach a 
theory, if they are able to apply it, they are improving from the lower order to the middle order. But most important is when they are in the higher order skills, which is they are able to evaluate and create new knowledge. So that is what is the challenge. And the performance assessment also needs to be done as part of the learning experience in a very effective manner. If you are fair and uh, you know uh, genuine in your process, the process it's a critical process and it will help you to achieve the learning outcome. Next slide. Yeah. So as I had last mentioned, these are the Bloom's taxonomy. So the lower order is remembering and understanding where the students recall facts, you know, and uh, they explain the ideas or concepts, which is the basic levels. Our target should be to take the student from the lower order to the middle order, which is apply and analyze where they use this information in a new situation where they draw conclusion amongst ideas, you know, they analyze there are uh, and finally, we have to move them to the higher order thinking where they evaluate the process given uh, two options, which would be the better option. They should be able to evaluate, assess and give a genuine logical reason. And likewise, the final goal is to help students create new challenges and knowledge, knowledge for the entire group. Next slide. Okay, now let us look at what are the factors that affect pedagogy. Learning style of students. When I say learning style, each student has a distinctive learning style. Some are audio learners, some are visual learners, some are, you know, read write learners, some are kinesthetic learners. Some learn by discussions. So we have to identify what kind of learner we have and which are the learning styles that is predominant among the students. Obviously, the competence of the instructor is a very crucial thing. And uh, that is what we are all doing here, trying to gain more competency as an instructor trying to understand what are the things that we need to un, uh, develop in ourselves to make our sessions more engaging and attractive. The availability of additional resources. When I say resources, I mean uh, all the additional resources or tools that you are getting to conduct your class, whether it is a PowerPoint, uh, whether it is a smart classroom, whether it is access to videos, whether it is an OHP, a Blackboard, a Whiteboard, whether you have uh, open air, whatever, all the environment and accessories that are surrounding you are the additional resources. Very importantly, the educational system, you know, uh, there are different uh, educational systems and different demands of these educational systems. Some have a huge syllabus, which is uh, pushed into a very short time then that gives very little time for the you know learn, teacher to experiment and try out new methods they are more time bound and uh, some organizations also put a very high amount of load on the teacher so they don't get time to prepare for each session ideally you should prepare for one hours class at least 3 to 4 hours even if you are repeating the class you need a 2 hour preparation for the same day. Only then you will be able to sustain the interest and captive the student's attention. And obviously the field of study, you know, different fields of study require different pedagogy and uh, styles. There are some theoretical fields of study where a lot of case studies and examples can be given. And there are some practical fields of study where uh, experiential learning and project based learning would have more significance. So these are the different factors broadly which affect the pedagogy of a session that is left to the teacher. Next. Yeah. Please know what 
type of learners you have, whether they are visual, auditory, read, write, or kinesthetic. Uh, I have given you a link which you can copy or you can note down. This link has a short question air of about 20, 25 watt questions, which will analyze and tell you what kind of learner you are. So you can also try this with all your students, get a good idea what kind of students form the majority of your classroom. There will may be multiple types of learners in each student who may be partly kinesthetic and partly auditory. So you have to plan your pedagogy with a mix of the different styles so that you are in touch with different learners. So if you have uh, taken down this, I think uh, we'll move on to the next slide. Yeah, it's again learning styles. There's a visual learner, there's a musical or auditory learner, there's a verbal learner who hears and uh, you know learns. There's a physical or kinesthetic learner who learns by doing. There's a mathematical or logical learner who's uh, you know understanding is all in terms of numbers and logic. There are group learners who are social learners, you can say, who prefer to learn better when there is a discussion going on in a group. And there's a solitary learner who is more happy and content to learn all by himself. So please check out what is your learning style and uh, then also involve your students and you can take this forward. Next. Okay. I am going to touch a little bit about the different learning theories. There are broadly four theories of uh, learning, the behaviorism theory, the cognitivism theory, the humanism theory and the constructivism theory. Behaviorism is related mostly to direct instructions, programmed instructions and social learning theories. The cognitivism is connected to the attribution, elaboration, cognitive development and conditions of learning. The humanism theory is mostly based on experiential learning. And the constructivism theory is a social development wherein case-based learning, cognitive apprenticeship, discovery learning, problem-based learning or problem solving, situation-based learning, activity-based learning, and actor network theory. All these are connected to constructivism. I will also share some of the thoughts on this, on uh, who are the leading exponents who have put forward these theories. You may read more about this and gain more knowledge. Next slide, ma'am. Yeah. So here you see each theory I have listed on who are the main authors who have promoted it. What is the key concept that is uh, the particular theory all about? What is the key theory itself? And what is the role of the teacher? Please go through this slide. Take a minute or two if you want. Take a picture of the slide or uh, you know uh, note down. Because this is actually what will help you to understand what you are doing and uh, what would be the concept that you should follow, what is the key theory behind it. I'll give you a minute to make a note of it. I hope uh, you all have gone through this. Next slide, please. Yeah. Now there are different approaches to pedagogy. There is a constructivist approach where you build upon experiences, you construct. There is a collaborative approach where you know you collaborate 
among students or among peers and then there is a reflective approach which is thought based there is an inquiry based approach which is based on questions and answers and you know examinations and finally there is an integrative approach which integrates any of the other different approaches next slide ma'am yeah again you see a constructive approach is student centered it builds on past knowledge the instructor or facilitator is learning by doing helping the students to do and learn it's building on experiences it may be slow paced the next one is the reflective approach a continuous assessment of the pedagogical practices thought process model approach for training teachers you know for new for people it's outcome based and it involves timely reassessment of learning objectives so you can use it if you are a newcomer a collaborative approach as i said you collaborate involves teamwork pools and different abilities of learners teachers and students may may not work in teams it depends enables the use of different teaching practices the integrative approach it integrates the classroom with the outside world makes the curriculum more realistic or practical you know and uh, relatable the student is uh, you know uh, part of the process encourages application of knowledge higher order thinking bloom's taxonomy and it generates interest in mathematics and science especially the inquiry based approach is student centered excites curiosity in the learners and answers the problem solving skills there are usually four types a confirmation where you know already the answer is there they just confirm it there's a structure so they develop the structure there's a guided process where the facilitator guides them from one step to another and there's an open where you know the students come up with multiple solutions like they do in a case study and each of these solutions are discussed to analyze which would be the most ideal one next slide ma'am okay so these are some suggested articles and books for further reading you may please make a note of these uh, they are interesting articles on uh, teaching learning pedagogy and so if anybody is interested you can study and look up these articles again i'll give you a minute to note it down before we move on you have all noted let's move on ma'am okay now let us look at some strategies of collaborative learning collaborative it can be a team based learning so you assign different teams with tasks and let them come up and discuss their outcomes or findings in the class and we'll build on that make a pair let them think pair and share catch up the entire group can catch up on a particular thought uh, you know unwind and uh, it can also be a fishbowl debate where each person speaks whatever comes in their mind and it can also be a case study where you know you work individually or in groups to find different solutions next please look at this slide very carefully if you see at the right hand side i have mentioned something called passive learning process and in the lower half it is the active learning process so if you see there are different methods of uh, you know teaching or learning 
and you see which method is falling under which uh, part. A lecture is a passive learning process where the student retain only 5% of what is taught. When they read, they retain 10%. When there is an audiovisual support, the retention is about 20%. When there is a demonstration being made by the trainer, the retention is a little higher, about 30%. But the moment the student starts getting involved in the process, when there is a discussion, retention is 50%. When they practice doing along with the trainer, the retention is 75%. And the best way to teach is let the student become a teacher and teach others when the knowledge transfer occurs at a very significant level of 90%. So that is what we actually want to achieve. You know, we want our students to achieve 90 to 100% knowledge. If that is the case, this is what we should be doing. Let us look at kinesthetic and virtual reality in our teaching. Keep the sessions active rather than passive. So. Please try and understand what are the actual active learning process and how you can move your class from a passive to an active. If it's a lecture, just convert it from being a lecture to a discussion. It becomes active. If it is a demonstration, have the students practice along with you. It becomes active. Have the students lead the session. It becomes a very active session. Next slide. OK. In earlier days, you know, a teacher would have been very efficient if he or she possessed the five skills which are there on the left. Good communication, adaptability, collaboration, inclusivity, and compassion. But in today's classroom, there is a lot more you need. You need to be well organized. You need tolerance because the children are very different. Their behavior is also different. You need to be very patient and tolerant. You need to have a lot of pre preparation because there is uh, Google always wide open for the students and they have a lot more information than you have. So you need a lot of commitment. You need to be, you know, very uh, passionate and committed towards your uh, subject. You need to be innovative and creative. You need to come out with new thoughts, new process, new methods. Catch the students off guard. Don't be, you know, um, the right word for that is don't be predictable. You must always keep them expecting something different or new. You must be a technology enthusiast. You must have good command of technology. You must be able to do a lot of storytelling, be creative. And you must be open for questions. Never fear uh, questions. And even if you don't know questions, be brave enough and you know uh, smart enough to say that openly. Yeah, this is something which I have not come across yet, but it's an interesting question. No doubt, I'll look into it and I'll get back to you the next day. When you admit that you do not know something, it does not make you, you know, look like a fool. It only makes the student more happy that he has asked a tough question and he will be, he or she will be more pleased that you have given the question due importance to look it up and revert back. And also remember that when you say something, definitely look back and revert for the question in the coming session. Be very social with your students, uh, ma'am, back. Yeah. And you must be prone to being a geek. You know, what is a geek? You must be very strong with uh, modern day language, modern day tools and things. SMS lingo, all these things you need to be smart with. Only then you would be able to, you know, fit into the role of a teacher and you must keep developing these habits. Next one. OK, what are the things that you can do to improve your pedagogical skills? You review the student evaluations. You discuss these skills with your colleagues. 
have a chat what you are doing what the other friends are doing and uh, you know these chats will always improve your own skills you attend conferences professional ones you attend webinars and seminars like this and you know brush up on this knowledge you keep up with studies in pedagogy i have given you some uh, google has thousands more you ask for additional training ask your uh, university school college whatever to provide you with training keep updated with new technology and gadgets these are all essential can we move on now yeah now let us look at how you are going to develop a lot of skills how you are going to use these skills number one be a proactive communicator don't wait for others to ask be open be share ready to share and share more information try out different teaching styles to so based on different learning styles you know let students design an assignment be creative give them the thing take a back seat let them be in the forefront make your classrooms more inclusive give students space to express themselves do not stop anybody when they are saying something relevant encourage them to participate learn to identify the learning traits of the students and just be a facilitator help and support learning do not you know uh, try to teach just guide the students and they will learn by themselves with your support that is what is important next slide ma'am see i am giving you some uh, innovative teaching methods which are being used in the current day you can apply all of this in your uh, classes project based learning give projects it can be individual it can be group you can have this flip classrooms is a modern trend which is catching up you know so the students study at home and uh, come and solve assignments in the class so they come prepared and the class is done in their homework instead of the general practice of class work and then uh, give assignments the other way around uh you can develop some crosswords quizzes mcqs and uh, you know this is also available online you can ask them experimentation and experiential learning activity based learning simulation based learning virtual labs and you know blended learning any of these process all these are innovative teaching methods you could have some innovative teaching method of your own also so welcome as long as the outcome is achieved the method is not important next so what is the delivery process now i am just highlighting what is the delivery process we set the learning objectives or the you know program objectives or course objectives next instruction delivery and self learning when i say self learning you are also learning along with the students the learning activity happens interactions exercises practices all this happen then there is an evaluation then feedback this feedback will help you to redesign the objectives and start all over again this is the learning cycle it's like somewhat the planning cycle you know plan execute analyze take feedback and then replan so it is the same kind of system you can repeat it for each chapter each credit point or each course that is uh, free for you to decide how you want to do it next slide ma'am okay so i am coming close to the end of this presentation i am just going to highlight some of the important points which are there in my mind first thing every session try to start with an ice breaker or uh, you know some small short story or event which brings the class back into the class especially in the afternoon sessions you know once the students come after lunch they are very lethargic so you must have a short story or something some activity to you know charge them up let them uh, be energized and then you start your session then follow the win what interest need what tell them the purpose what is this that you are going to teach have a short story or something interesting about that subject so that the students are attracted and need give a need a professional need or a personal need must be attached to it 
if the student does not have any particular need for the subject they will not have any interest in the subject so use will if you remember i had used this three in the beginning of this session structured and planned delivery so you must have a very clear structure of the program or of the lesson and you must plan your delivery break down the session into steps so that it is easy to understand reinforce stimulate engage evaluate and summarize when you are summarizing you are again actually reinforcing whatever thought you have given in the beginning so all these process you need to follow and continue ma'am yeah there are some tips which i am sharing for keeping classrooms uh, you know very attentive and engaged the teacher must be highly energetic keep your energy levels high if you are not feeling up to it don't take the session but don't go with uh, you know drowsy look or appearance and you know today i am not feeling well so i will be seated such classes are very boring and outcomes are very pathetic i said don't get predictable keep the student guessing what is coming next what is going to happen in the next day if you are able to do that 50% of your job is achieved don't do different things but do things differently teach the subject don't teach it as the normal way try to do different things inside be innovative and creative use new methods use uh, new strategies involve students let them take the lead and uh, you know uh, do the sessions each day you can give option chance to others and uh, be a guide sit behind and let the students run the classroom next always be yourself don't try to inculcate or idealize or patronize or be like somebody else be honest and be passionate you carry your interest your passion of the subject that will attract the students if you have some limitations accept those try to overcome those limitations but never say that you know uh, i don't have these limitations learn from students acknowledge the achievements of students anything small achievement also celebrate that achievement in public and if you have to admonish a student do it in private keep yourself updated with continuous and constant research keep more uh, you know, knowledge for yourself on a day to day basis prepare for each session like it is your first session the first time you are coming and lastly you know be prepared for the unexpected things the students questions or uh, outcomes whatever you know it might be come something coming completely beyond your imagination so be prepared for that and be ready to have a plan b or backup to face such kind of situation uh, that is about all i am now open to questions uh, anybody has any questions you can please unmute and ask or uh, put the questions in the chat box i'll uh, do my best to help you out Yes, please. Thank you, sir. Participants, yeah. the session is open up for discussion. You can post your queries in the chat box also. Yeah. Sir, kindly share your PPT, sir. Yeah, that will be shared. You it will also be available on YouTube. So don't worry about that. Thank you, sir. Participants, any queries, please? Usha Rani, you have mentioned uh, win. Win means what, interest and need. So what is the session all about? That is the first thing. Interest. Why this? Uh, you should share a short story or something to make the topic interesting. Need. I gave you these three things.